February 8, 1924, Berkeley Daily Gazette, Berkeley, California. Spirit tricks are revealed by Hungarian Public Ledger Foreign Service, copyright 1924 by Public Ledger Company. Vienna, February 8. Ladislas Laszlo, a Hungarian electrotechnician who for one and a half years has been a center of attention among German spiritualists and who has been regarded as one of the greatest mediums in Central Europe, has exposed himself as a fake and condemned the whole movement as a swindle after taking in the greatest of the German psychical researchers, Dr. Schrank Nosing of Munich. Laszlo has had innumerable sittings before all the leading scientific spiritists of Central Europe. He has earned from his seances more than 20,000 Hungarian kronen for the Budapest Society of Psychical Research and has had brilliant offers from England and America. His most astonishing feat was the materialization phenomenon whereby he produced, upon a black curtain, hands, faces, and heads of his surrounding spirits. He produced these phenomena after being stripped, bathed, and locked up in a glass box. Schrank Nosing, Germany's Sir Oliver Lodge, made a special trip to Budapest recently to see him and pronounced the head which Laszlo produced against the black curtain as icy cold, a real plasma. Now Laszlo reveals that he took the head out of Schrank Nosing's pocket where he had previously put it and that the real plasma was a combination of absorbent cotton, medical gauze, and goose grease compressed into a ball the size of a nut. Laszlo states that two years ago he attended some seances and became convinced that they were all fakes and that he could do something quite as good. He made up his mind to show up the whole movement. Going to some of the leading spiritists, he applied as a medium. He was tested, had to show whether he could go into a trance, and being possessed of considerable histrionic ability, he did go. He knew that strips of insulating linen, which had been around electric wires, would become phosphorescent when pulled, and concealed some of this linen under his chair, making Marconi signals with it. He admits being a good sleight-of-hand performer, and says that this talent was a great aid in his career. In the books of Professor Schrank Nosing, he read that world-famous mediums had produced actual materialization phenomena, hands and heads. He found that the simple materials, goose grease, absorbent cotton and gauze, had a peculiar resilience in combination and could be quickly stretched out and formed into nearly any shape. He usually concealed the material under his chair and forbade the audience to touch it during the materialization saying that if the plasma were touched, he would die. When Schrank Nosing came to Budapest to see him a short time ago, he resolved to expose the whole swindle before him. Therefore, he was exceptionally daring, and, while the controllers were undressing him in front of Schrank Nosing, slipped the cotton ball into the professor's left-hand upper coat pocket, recovering it when the search had revealed that he, Laszlo, had nothing concealed about his person. Then he allowed Schrank Nosing to touch the materialization with the results described. The professor was overcome with emotion and with admiration for the medium and later referred to Laszlo's phenomena as one of the strongest proofs of the truth of spiritism. It is probable that Laszlo was tempted after this to continue his swindle, which was very remunerative and had already won him world fame among spiritists, because for some weeks he did not expose himself. However, he finally went to a group of alienists and psychiatrists in Budapest and told them the truth. Under their auspices, a society of 70 leading Hungarian professors and scientists was brought together where Laszlo revealed the swindle. The German spiritualist movement, which, like the English and American, was very popular just after the war, became less popular later. In the last weeks, however, it has again excited great public interest, particularly in Vienna, where the demonstrations of the Schneider brothers before the Vienna Society of Psychical Research have created a sensation. 
Laszlo's expose involving Professor Schrank nosing is one of the hardest blows the German movement has had to suffer. July 15, 1930, Eugene Register Guard, Eugene, Oregon. Scientist denounces spiritism. Professor Karl Dallenbach, as rotary speaker, flays fraud in field. Conceived in fraud, damned by ignorance, and erred by the will to believe, is the verdict of Professor Karl M. Dallenbach, noted Cornell psychologist and teacher at the Oregon Summer School on Spiritism, as expressed in his talk on the subject at the Eugene Rotary Club Tuesday. Professor Dallenbach, in his opening, made it clear that he had no quarrel with spiritualism, which he defined as either a philosophy or religious belief, things far from the field of science. He limited his attack to spiritism, which he defined as the attempt to prove the existence of spirits or ghosts by what purport to be scientific methods. But on that sector, he launched a drive as vigorous as the smashing football tactics he used to teach at Oregon when he was coaching the line back in Shy Huntington's playing days. Professor Dallenbach began by assailing the assertion often made by mediums and spiritists that spiritism is accepted by the men of the scientific world. He said that Jasto's census of American scientists revealed that not more than 2% of all scientific men, and no psychologists at all, had been found willing to say that they accepted the spiritistic hypothesis as capable of factual proof. But a census of the opinions of scientists alone, said Professor Dallenbach, is not enough to disprove the theory of spiritism. It is the fact that spiritism has survived and spread despite repeated exposures of the frauds behind it, which show how much it depends on the will to believe. He said spiritism had its real beginnings in a little town near Rochester, New York. Back in the 40s, a farmer and his wife were disturbed one night by tapping noises in a room overhead. Having lived long with the rumor that a peddler had once been killed in the house, they started a search upstairs. Two small girls were apparently asleep upstairs. Little or no effort was made to connect the two girls with the noises, despite the fact that the noises failed to occur when the girls were removed from the upstairs room. On the contrary, the girls were supposed to be endowed with psychic powers and, in due course, began to display their phenomena on the stage, traveling over the entire world. It was perhaps 20 years later, said Professor Dallenbach, that one of the girls, Catherine Fox, desiring to enter the Catholic faith, made a confession that she and her sister had been responsible for the entire system of noises. First, they produced them by dropping apples with strings attached. Later, they learned to rap with their toes on the foot of the bed. Finally, they developed to a fine degree the art of snapping their toes. Despite the fact that the frauds were demonstrated on a public stage, spiritists merely said they had been exposed under duress. The house in which the girls once lived was taken down, board by board, and moved to Lilydale, New York, where it stands today as a shrine for those with the will to believe. He told of Slate writing as the next hoax invented by a man named Slade. He said Slade's downfall came when he attempted to get a widow to deed over property on the strength of alleged communication with the dead. A professional magician named Weiss knowing how the trick was done, served notice on Slade that he must either make a public confession or be exposed in court and sent to jail. But, according to Professor Dallenbach, Slade's confession was put down by spiritists as only another case of duress. The exposure of the great Palladino, an Italian woman, by a committee of scientists including Munsterberg and Hall, was the speaker's next tale. He said the Palladino came during the era of jumping chairs and tables. She would invite two men to stand beside her during the performance, one to sit on either of her hands, with his feet bearing down on her foot nearest to his side. Everything had to be done in the dark, of course, said Dallenbach. It is always necessary to have complete darkness. 
but the psychologists very cleverly introduced two men, all in black, with the faces and hands blackened into the room with the great Palladino, and unbeknown to her, these men, being free to move, found that the Palladino could slip her feet out of the light steel slippers she wore and do things with them in the air. They also found that she could wiggle around in the dark and make both of her escorts sit on the same hand so that she had one hand free to lift things. His last case had to do with the exposure of Mrs. Keyes of California by Professor Coover, Stanford psychologist. Mrs. Keyes would have men bind her to a chair with ropes, her own ropes. Then she would call down the spirits of noted men and weigh them on sensitive scales. Dahlenbach said the spirit of William James, the noted philosopher, was supposed to weigh nine pounds. The Stanford scientist, said Dahlenbach, trapped the Keyes woman by introducing into the room thin sheets of smoked paper. In the darkness, he slipped the paper onto the surface of the scales. When the light was turned on, the imprints of the Keyes woman's hands were on the paper, and the dirt from the paper was in her hands. As a final demonstration, Professor Dahlenbach performed a feat of slate writing despite the fact that the room was not darkened. All supposedly spiritistic phenomena, he said, are simply the results of trickery and fraud. Though he did not mention the late Sir Conan Doyle or Sir Oliver Lodge, the remaining outstanding figure in the spiritism world, he declared with emphasis that spiritistic claims had never stood the tests of science in a single case. Henry Korn was entertainment chairman for the day and introduced the speaker. There were 12 out-of-town Rotarians present and 10 visitors.